Francesco, thanks for joining us. You were a tennis player from a young age, and of course you're the president of the International Tennis Federation. Was tennis always in the blood? Oh yes, more or less, yes. Uh, since I started playing, uh, I was playing football too, or soccer in this part of the world, but uh, well enough. But at that time, for a student like me, tennis was more a seasonal sport, so I chose sport at some stage and I did well. Tennis is fortunate to have some high-profile stars who've come out in, in support of clean sport. Is this what you want from your players? Is this important? Yes, this is very important, I would say. It's absolutely important when Federer and Murray, especially these two in the late period, uh, speak out in favour of the programme that we have. Uh, it's, it's helpful. I don't think it's the number of testing that makes the quality of a programme very good. It's the way we test, uh, you know, we have in tennis another specific item and issues that is uh, out of competition. We have, there is practically no out of competition in our activity, at least at professional level. But uh, what we are looking now is to make deeper the activity in the small tournament where could be the education is very, very important. The prevention is more important than the detection. And so we, I, I believe that we approach all the, uh, the challenge that a good program has in the right way. So that doesn't mean that is, uh, we, we have to improve all the time, but I think we have a very good program. What I would like to promote a little bit more is also the understanding of the people that are caught uh, not being in compliance with the, the rule, not to consider the ITF as a cruel body, but uh, as a body that try to make the rule respected. What message do you think you need to get across to them to educate them better? Well, the message is that we do this for them, also for the player, and not only for the top players, but for all the players of the world and the sports people. So the doping program is, uh, has two basic aim. One is uh, to preserve the integrity of the sport, but the second one is also the health. So it's a very important uh, uh, duty that the sport organization has to fulfill. From time to time, people would say tennis as a sport lends itself to having a potential doping problem because it's competitive, they're long matches, you need endurance. What would you say to these critics? Well, you, you have to live with that. First of all, uh, we have to some extent some advantage. We are a skilled sport, so uh, doping could do something. Uh, it's, we have to be vigilant because doping obviously could help to recover energy. It could help to play when you are not completely fit. But uh, in general terms, I believe that uh, tennis has always been upfront to this um, battle against the doping. So in the, according to the VADA code, you know the sport, the two major players in doping are the NADOs and the International Federation. And then uh, the burden on the International Federation at the beginning was very big in our sport uh, in terms of quantity required. So we look uh, immediately for the quality and then this is we are satisfied. I think after some uh, effort I think we are in a good condition in the program. What are the main challenges for tennis and anti-doping in the years ahead? Well, when you have 85% of the program international, the main challenge is the budget. <laughs> so you cannot spend all the money. In uh, It would be very easy to, to say increase the testing. So this is the reason we have been really a leader one of the leaders sport in looking for the quality and we believe that now everybody has embraced this concept that intelligent testing, a biological passport program, all this kind of thing and I think this is the right way for everybody to, to improve and to make the program more effective. You've been on the WADA Foundation board since 2003. How far do you think WADA and anti-doping in general has progressed? Unbelievably. The work WADA is very recognised. The code is a reference. The last code, I would say also as a sport person, is much better, uh, more concise. We still have an issue. To be more effective, we cannot spend all the money in doping. So the money that we spend has to be spent very well. And this depends only from one issue. The issue is the cooperation, better cooperation, more effective cooperation between the major stakeholders, and I mean obviously NADO and the International Federation. They should be more complementary and to work together. Tell us a little bit more about how useful the athlete biological passport is for the sport of tennis. It's absolutely important. We are not old in this experience. We have a few years and obviously we are following up. 
And we found very, very interesting, at least the people involved technically in this program, they consider a vital, a vital tool. Uh, and uh, also the next coming, uh, we, we really we embrace all the new uh, <laughs> initiatives that BADA encouraged the International Federation to take over. Looking more broadly at tennis, you've been a strong advocate for putting the spectator, the, the tennis fan, first, for instance, the, ensuring the Davis Cup is every year. What are the main areas in the future where you would like to ensure the spectators' interests are upheld? I think uh, everybody could acknowledge that tennis is uh, really in a golden time, uh, both uh, men's and women's, and you know the top players are always the role models. But I, if I could send a message for, uh, for people that are coming after me, uh, since I decided to step down, at least for the International Tennis Federation, at the end of this year, to see a little bit more innovative in the rule of tennis. So our sport is a little bit conservative. And the major component of this conservative approach are the players. Could be surprising for you, but it's like that. So it's very difficult to change something. I am personally an advocate of two things that should be considered. So the one self, because I believe the two self is something coming from the past, and one self could add a very uh, psychological factor to the interest of the game, and the second perhaps to shorten the set. Uh, shorten the set, uh, taking into account also the real demanding effort that has been asked now to the top player during the year. You decided not to run for another term as ITF president. What would you like to see in the years ahead for tennis? A more innovative approach on the rules of the game and nothing else. You don't have to change what is working very well. Tennis has gone through something of a golden era, on this, particularly on the men's side. How pleasing has that been? It was a privilege for me uh, to have uh, 16 years of uh, president of ITF during practically the same time of the career of uh, people like Roger Federer, Rafael Nadal, uh, Djokovic, Murray. People that are not only great players, but also great ambassadors of our sport. They have been great ambassadors. And this is very important for the promotion of the game to the young people. Now the sport are competing with the young people. And if you have role models like this one, you are very privileged. As the president of ASWAF, how do you see the development of anti-doping in Summer Olympic International Federation? Huge progress has been made. So we, we, we start from, it was a long road and it was a long way. I remember I was involved first time, I was asked even by President Summerlands to being a little bit interested in this matter. And then Rogge in 2001, 2002, the, the road has been very long, but I, I can say with a lot of satisfaction, at least on behalf of the Olympic sport, uh, the sensitivity, the awareness of the, of the importance of the doping is greatly increased and not only that but the people are really available, all of them, to, to have good program, to improve their program, to take care of their specific problem. Each sport has very specific problem and uh, I think uh, the, still, the, the last issue that I think is really what has done unbelievable progress the last issue is to be more effective in the cooperation because the different st stakeholders, to be complementary, not perhaps duplicating, something like that, I would tackle this matter. What are your main plans when you finish as president of the ITF? Well, I have many plans. Uh, first of all, I will stay in VADA and uh, for all 16 I have three jobs that are more than enough, I think. VADA board, the uh, ASWAF uh, presidency and uh, I am a member of the Coordination Committee of Rio de Janeiro, that is not a, an easy job, and uh, so this is more than enough. But in the future, I believe I st uh, one of my passion is to transfer my experience, so I do a lot of lecture in uh, sport management, combining my business experience, it was very long, and the sport one, and I enjoy very much to transfer to young people. Um, the sport has to improve in terms of management, in governance, and, it's not, there's a lot to do and it's, uh, it's a matter that interests me a lot. Francesco Ricci thank you very much. It was my pleasure.